Okay, so we're moving on with Vasari, um, and in particular in this module, we're going to be looking at wind data and how we can begin looking at wind data to make some design modifications and to improve our design thinking. So the first thing, uh, and again, this is Vasari Beta 2. This is sort of a new thing that's been happening um, on multiple computers. It seems like there's a little bit of a bugaboo uh, in terms of opening up files with a site location uh, image. So this was the uh, initial um, site background object um, and it's not linking back up with the texture map of the satellite photograph. So when you're opening your files up, um, it just only takes a couple of seconds to re-grab your location. So we're just going to start through that first. You know, my location is already tagged. You know, the computer remembers that. I just need to switch to satellite and zoom in a bunch and re-import the site image. So again, I'm not sure why that's happening, but it's really not that big of a deal. Um, whammo, done, uh, should only take a couple of seconds. So sorry that that's gonna happen. Um, you know, that's working with beta software. Uh, it's okay, it'll all be fine. So we've got that reloaded. Uh, if everything goes as it should, um, the building is still on the same site. Um, we're just updating um, you know exactly where we were. But what we want to do next is begin to look at wind data using Vasari. So I've got two specific tools, uh, Ecotech Wind Rose and Ecotech Wind Tunnel. Both of these are really robust tools uh, and very relevant to early design thinking on your project. So let's start with uh, Ecotech Wind Rose. Now there is a weird thing that goes on, speaking of oddities, um, there's a weird thing that goes on in terms of my screen capture software that I'm using where you're actually not seeing the wind rows. You should see this window right here, but none of the wind rows data. Uh, trust me, it's there. Um, so I've got some still images I'm going to slide in so you can kind of see what we're looking at. Um, but you won't able to be able to see the wind rows update sort of in real time. So first thing, I'm going to switch this to satellite view. And again, we're going to zoom in to the site here. Ideally, not pick the site up. Let's start that over one more time. Satellite view. And we are going to zoom directly in to the site. There we go. Control Z is your friend. Okay, so this is the default view from the Windrose. I have that overlaid on the satellite photograph. And if you note, I am looking at 30-year data um, from the wind to create the wind rows, um, 24 hours across the day, 12 months out of the year, 365 days. That data looks something like this. That is what should be on the screen right there. Uh, you can see the wind rows that that's generated. Um, and that's great and all, um, but let's be honest, that is information that is very arbitrary and not particularly useful, especially when you take into account um, a climate like Tennessee, where the wind in November, December, January, February is completely different than the type of wind in June, July, and August. So we really want to be able to customize this wind rows to build specific conditions. So to do that, let's look at sort of winters first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the month bar, which is this yellow guy. And I'm just going to drag it across. So that what we're really looking at is, let's say, December to January, maybe even middle February. And you can see that that is um, um, different kind of wind. This is wind that we typically want to block. And I'm also, let's say, you know, again, we're working on a train station project. And let's say that um, the train station is going to be the most active in the morning. And what that does is that dramatically alters the wind rows. And let me pull across my screen capture of the wind rows so you can see it. It dramatically alters what that wind rows is. Um, where it was a little bit more arbitrary. We're really now specifically seeing colder winds out of the south, southwest, and a little bit out of the north. 
that's data that I really need. That's data that's very useful. That begins to inform me the type of wind that I want to be able to block. Um, uh, definitely not the type of wind that I want to be able to capture. So in terms of how I'm relating my entry door sequence, any exterior waiting spaces, things like that, I know which direction the most harsh wind is coming from, and I can begin to design strategies to block that wind. That is data that's good and that I can really put to use rather than just sort of this arbitrary data that's looking um, year long. So let me close that up and let's make a few more modifications. And let's say, okay, um, through the months of mid-June through mid-September is when that I really want to be able to capture. And, you know, hottest time of the day is a little bit later in the day, you know, so I'm really interested from, you know, maybe about one o'clock on. And again, the wind data here, again, dramatically changes. Let me bring in the screen grab of that. And I know the wind is predominantly out of the north and a little bit out of the northeast for this location. So again, that changes how I can align windows, um, where I can think about natural ventilation and cross ventilation, as well as again, where I want and how I want to orient exterior waiting spaces, elements like that in my design. That again is information that's really, really relevant. So to start putting some of those things to the test in terms of how well they can perform, along with the wind rose tool is another tool called ecotech wind tunnel so let's go ahead and launch wind tunnel and what wind tunnel is giving me is a real-time graphic feedback of how wind is going to perform uh, and right now i have this set up for a horizontal plane that's going to be the default a horizontal plane so it's in the xy plane um, and how wind is moving. So I'm going to use the rotate tool here really quick and get us a slightly more elevated view. And I know, let's think first about those summer winds that I want to be able to capture. Um, I'm going to go to my selection tool and I'm going to grab this portion of the compass and I'm just going to rotate it around so that the wind is coming out of the north northeast. There's a little yellow ball right here that I'm dragging with my cursor. The further away from the center, the stronger the wind is. You can see the velocity being updated right here, 26 meters per second. That would be a significantly strong wind. So let's just sort of back that off a little bit and we can see it changing real time. And now you can begin to start to see some data about how this is going to perform. Um, where are sort of the dead zones in terms of air moving, you know, zero meters per second, you know, what's being created as a shield around the building and where wind is actually even increasing in velocity past, you know, it's right now wind is set at 12 meters per second, which again is a very strong wind, but we can see it's even moving faster than that. This yellow portion is 27, 28 meters per second because of the wind sort of being compressed and accelerated by that compression, kind of like putting your thumb over a hose, um, uh, you know, and accelerating the water out by increasing the pressure. We kind of have the same thing happening with wind around these edges. And again, that is a tool that I can use to try and move air around. Now, again, there's not going to be anybody that stood out in the wind, you're going to know that there's not this large of a dead zone behind the building. So wind is moving in a slightly more three dimensional way than this is giving us. But we can do a few additional things to start to look at wind in different sort of directions. So the first thing I'll do is let's change this to a YZ vertical axis. And I'll move that axis if I can. It's changed its position so it's actually cutting over the building. So again, wind is still coming out of that north-northeast direction. Let's increase its velocity just a little bit so we can sort of see what's happening. And you can start to see it, it's really in particular useful to sort of make a change with the wind rows and sort of see how it reacts. It sort of settles into a pattern once it gets going. Um, but you can see that wind is actually sort of wrapping around this a little bit. We can also move this to a volumetric kind of display. 
So I'm going to change the model um, type. to, uh, it's going to take me just a second to find this. We want to use flow lines and I'm going to turn on 3D volumetric and I am going to turn off the 2D grid slice. And then we're going to look at the flow line settings. And right now you can see this sort of red box right here. I actually want the flow coming from probably that direction right there to look at that wind coming out of the north. So I've hit apply and OK. I should be able to start seeing a 3D analysis. Um, not just sort of a 2D sliced analysis. So right now it's generating the 3D path of the arrows. And by the way, when you launch this on your computer, this little program, uh, Wind Tunnel, is an absolute beast. Um, you will hear every fan on your computer start to, to turn on. It is processing a lot of information. Um, so it's a really good thing, and I didn't do this, it's a really good thing to save before you launch Wind Tunnel. Um, not that it's uh, uh, something that we've seen crash often um, because the software is buggy, but because we have seen, it, seen uh, Wind Tunnel bring computers to a grinding halt simply because of the complexity of the calculations that it's running. So hopefully we'll get some data here running in just a second. And while I'm waiting on that, um, gosh, if there's something else I could talk about with Wind Tunnel, I sure will. Oh, you know, the one other thing that we've used Wind Tunnel for that I'm not showing right now is we have definitely built um, some schematic building sections um, and looked at wind flow through the building. And that's actually more exciting than sort of the site analysis stuff to me because sort of predicting how air is going to move through open windows and through spaces can be really complicated when we think about a building cross section. There's a brand new version of, of this wind tunnel out called Project Falcon where you can actually begin importing your Revit files into the software. And I'm really excited about employing that and hopefully we can do some software uh, tutorials on that in the near future. Really looking at this idea of how do I take a Revit file, eliminate um, what I'm exporting, you know, don't export windows, things like that that are going to be operable, and then move that through Project Falcon and, and use that to study wind flow. I've seen some also some really interesting demonstrations of looking at the wind flow to study air pressure coming out of a duct, where that air is moving, things like that. In, in particular, when you think about a healthcare facility, uh, are we moving air across six? sick people and to the healthy people, um, or are you moving it um, from the sick people and to out of the building or into a filtration process? Things like that are incredibly important um, to be able to understand how it works. Not just in terms of mechanical systems, but in terms of, you know, how can we start naturally ventilating some spaces like that to make the buildings healthier? Um, all of that is incredibly relevant information. So I, I, that little spill killed a few minutes. Um, I'm still waiting on data, uh, and I'm curious as to whether or not it hasn't completely crashed on me, um, and it's just sort of spinning right now. Uh, so I might choose to just go ahead and collapse this and say, trust me, it's going to work, um, unless there's something that I can do. I'm going to check one thing. Let's look at our flow line settings, and let's see if I can't reduce the number of lines by a significant amount. Um, so again, it's going to be doing fewer calculations. And let's see if that can't perhaps get me the data that I need.
and it's not so i'm not sure exactly what's going on with it um but um in particular if you're in my 225 class and you're looking at this i'm less interested in those flow lines and i'm more interested in looking at both a vertical and horizontal plane across the building and those are the type of screen captures that we need to generate uh, as well as a commentary on where do we need to block wind where do we need to capture wind and what are the design modifications that you need to do to accomplish those tasks okay so just uh, did a quick restart on wind tunnel just to get everything working um, because I did want to show the flow lines and I'm just going to tack this on the back end of the Vasari video on doing wind studies so um, didn't really do anything different than what I was showing in the video other than restart the wind tunnel module and close down my recording software and open it all back up so the wind the wind flow lines give you something that looks a little bit like that um, again I was using the flow line settings to determine which surface around my site wind is coming from so this was the most relevant surface as that was capturing the um, north wind um, I can set the number of flow lines again I'm dropping that down so that it displays pretty well in fact I can drop it down even a little bit more um, and the maximum age is how long the lines are going to last the arrows work great so I'm just going to say okay to that and now you have sort of a little bit more of a 3d view in terms of how wind is going to wrap around the building and um, the other settings that are relevant to this is I've turned off the slice data and I have turned on the 3d analysis data so hope that helps sorry about the errors but they happen <laughs>